Also joining me now, former House Oversight Committee Chairman and former federal prosecutor Trey Gowdy. He's also Fox News contributor. Trey, um, good to have you here. Uh, I guess, first of all, you. you know, your, your thoughts on what Mr. Parks says and what, what Attorney General Barr was getting at in the interview that he did with Brad. I don't know Mr. Parks. I, I, I'm sure he's a great lawyer. I can tell you, um, having been a prosecutor, that when you have a guy who thinks he's Jesus and a knife in his hand and he's naked running down the street, you don't need to call a, a, a mental health counselor. You need to call the police. And if I heard him right, uh, he, he, he mentioned domestic violence as an area where we don't need the police. Martha, that is the most dangerous cop call that cops go on. And I'm in a state that leads the country in men killing women. So no, we don't need counseling. We need the cops to come arrest the perpetrator and take him to jail so she has a chance to live. So when I hear defund the police, who in the world is going to do the jobs that police do now? Who's going to process crime scenes? Who's going to arrest people? But, but, I mean, one of the problems, you heard what Bernard Carrick said, and, and I've heard this anecdotally as well, that people, you know, police officers just start saying, you know what, it's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth the litigious nature of this job. It's not worth, um, you know, putting your own life at risk when some of these situations become so volatile and then, uh, you know, you're, you're prevented from doing the job the way you think you should. Martha, I can tell you being a cop was a tough job a month ago, a year ago. I don't know a cop that only has one job. I don't know a cop that doesn't have to have a second yeah. job to supplement his or her income so their kids have a chance to go to college. It, it is a bad job, even on the days when you make it home alive. And there, there, there are lots of times in this country where cops don't make it home alive. So it, it is not a highly desirable job. It is a job where most men and women are called due to a sense of public service. There are bad apples, I prosecuted them. I want every bad cop prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, but that's about 2%. The other 98% are exactly yeah. what we want yeah, in this country. That's a great country. point. I mean, I think there's nothing worse than a bad cop, right? And there's nothing worse than a bad priest. Uh, all these places where people are supposed to be caring for people and doing the right thing, that is sort of the, the most evil thing when you see that happen. And I do think that, you know, these cameras and the body cams and they need to be left on is one way to make sure that you get rid of those people quickly. Because as the president said today, most by far, most police officers are taking their life in their hands and they're out there doing their job uh, for the rest of the community. Before I let you go quickly, uh, the House Democrats sort of unveiled this sweeping police reform uh, law that they are putting together. What did you what did you think of that? Uh, some of the ideas make sense, but more than 99 percent of all crime is state and local. So so Congress is not going to be able to fix your state and local police departments. I mean, if you really want to impact our justice system, get involved in your next sheriff's race, uh, run for, for city council and pick the next police chief. I mean, Congress thinks it can solve everything. 99% of what we're talking about is yeah. state and local, and the federal government has nothing to do with it other than money. So I find the defunding yeah. police to be ironic, because now you're talking about, about giving more money for training. Well, yeah, maybe that they've got approval rates in the 20%. So <laughs> um, maybe they should stick to the things that they have the levers over uh, rather than what happens Amen. locally, as you say. Trey, thank you.